Let's start at number 10. We are talking comebacks. Don't call it a comeback. On the very next play, Latmer goes right back to Brandon Pierce, a boy who makes an amazing grab for the touchdown. And when you come at the Kings, you best not miss. Fayetteville will stay back up 35-34 with two minutes left to play. And my guy Saul Smith let me know he not the only playmaker out here from the Ville. Go! Hey, yeah! hey! Yes, Keyshawn James gets a big sack and makes sure there wasn't about to be no miracles for the Golden Bulls on their final drive. The Broncos sneak up out of Charlotte with the CI South crown still untarnished, but FSU knows the heat is on and the rest of the division is coming at their neck. Marquise Go Hard Gorm gets the jet sweep, makes a cut, and if you're beside him, you're really behind him. 39 yards, six points, Shaw up 9-21-12. Just under eight minutes left in the game, Bowie looking to make a big play down the field, but Kevin Sherman reaches back and gets the nice pick. Shaw gets the ball back and the Bears are closing in on that upset. 2.53 left on the clock. Bowie State needs to make a big play and they did just that. Blake Dove puts the paws on the punt. Ricardo Smith dives on it in the end zone. The Shaw lead is cut down to two, 21-19, and the reigning CIAA champs are back up in this thing. Shaw was feeling all the pressure on their next drive as Bowie State held them to a quick three and out. With only 35 seconds left to play, Shaw looks to punt it away once again, and once again, Block Dove, excuse me, Blake Dove gets his hands on the punt. Ricardo Smith catches it and returns it down to the Shaw five yard line. Only 12 seconds left for Bowie State to get up out of Raleigh with the comeback win. Gaston Cooper finds Dushan David, eight yards, and you can go ahead and kill all that upset talk, Mo. Bowie State pulls it out in the final seconds, 26-21 Bulldogs. We're going to overtime. In the first overtime, A&M with the ball first. Jordan Bentley bounces it in. A&M up 28-21. Alabama State, their turn. Davis connects with Tyreek Allen for a Hornets touchdown. 28 all, another overtime. Hornets get the ball first in the second overtime. Davis in the back of the end zone. Jihad Booker comes down with the touchdown. 35-28 Hornets. Bulldogs facing third down. Glass rolls to the left, throws it up. And is Zabrion Moore once again in the end zone? A Bulldogs touchdown, 35 all. You guessed it, third overtime. In the third OT, it's time to drive the Bentley. Jordan Bentley, the senior running back, had over 200 all purpose yard scores on this six yard screen play. You have to go for two. Bentley taking the shovel pass into the end zone, 43 35 Bulldogs up. Hornets need a touchdown and a two-point conversion. They get six points here. Davis to Tyreek Allen again across the middle, 43-41. The two is mandatory. Would we get a tie? Desmond Fletcher comes up with the huge deflection for Alabama A&M. And for the second year in a row, the Bulldogs win it in Birmingham they take the 78th Magic City Classic. Number eight, number seven, we're talking about rivalries renewed. Now, I had a front row seat to number eight, Savannah State, back in the SIAC, kicking butt and taking names. It began in earnest when the Tigers marched on Atlanta and Morehouse. And number seven, Hampton, trying to stay connected with an invitation to the cookout in their HBCU roots, doing a little business with Virginia Union that didn't turn out as expected. Savannah State 17 to 10 winners in Atlanta on their welcome back to the SIAC tour. I don't want to get emotional, that's pretty awesome. It's been a downtrodden program for a lot of years. 20 years people have been embarrassed to be Savannah State fans and hadn't had a lot to talk on the water cooler. Now these guys can stick their chest out a little bit and we can bring some pride back, help save our school, our university, and put us back on the map. So a big win for us in Atlanta. And man, what a great crowd. Get that crowd, man. They're awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm very glad that we stepped down SIA, SIAC, mainly because our guys can compete on the level that other schools are at the same level. 
Prior to that, we were getting, it, it wasn't a good look. But now we're doing this, this, you know, this is one of our great outcomes from a game here locally in Atlanta. I love it, I love it. We get to play some games with some teams we're comfortable with playing, I love it. Is it easier as a fan to travel? Oh, heck yes. <laughs> it's easier to travel in the SIAC because we can go to the, go beat them Fort Valley Wildcats, them Golden Rams, beat them all because the mighty Savannah State Tigers. And you're not about to leg tackle no Tobias Taylor, bro, bro. 40 yards, another seven points, Union up 14-0. And I don't know why Jada Kiss Bonds was this wide open, but go ahead and knock yourself out with a 40-yard touchdown, my guy. Pirates cut the Panther lead to 14-7 in the second. But on the field in the second half, Union was Craig hitting Debo with the brick. Tobias Taylor has a couple strong runs that sets up another great play action touchdown pass from Khalid Morris to Charles Hall. This one for 28 yards, 21-17 Union with the lead. Shai McKenzie tries to reverse field in the absolute worst place you should ever try that, the end zone. He gets tripped up for safety. Two more points for the Panthers, 23-17 Virginia Union. A field goal by Union makes it 26-17, and you can officially start to see the sweat trickling down Hampton's cheek early in the fourth quarter. Francois looking to make a play to get his squad back in the game, but Sterling Hammond gets a pick. Khalid Morris finds Charles Hall in the end zone for the third time. It's 33-17 Union. They would add another field goal to make the final score 36-17. Union scores 22 unanswered points. Tobias Taylor finishes with 165 yards on the ground. Charles Taylor, three catches three touchdowns, 152 yards, and Union had some smoke for anyone thinking they were about to come for these boys from Richmond. We won! Oh my God! I tell them we need that thing in all work. With FAMU quarterback Ryan Lee Stanley sideline, McKay threw a back shoulder pass to Williams in the end zone to seal the win. To say it was a wild one in Tallahassee is the understatement of the year. Willie Simmons Rattlers are now 6-1 and 4-0 and and oh in the MEAC. They head up to Baltimore next week to face the Morgan State Bears. Washington and the Aggies will look to rebound next week as the Howard Bison visit Greensboro for Jiho, the greatest homecoming on earth. Coach, you guys remain undefeated in conference play. How does that feel? Well, it feels really good. Um, the guys have played extremely hard. You know, we had a mission at the beginning of the season to show everyone you know, that we're capable of being the best team in this conference. Uh, we set goals to win all of our natural rivalries, to win our home games, and that was two of those today. You know, with NT being a, a rivalry and it being a home game. So great job by the team. Um, faced a lot of adversity, as always, but these guys found a way to get it done. And how did you guys prepare for, you know, given that the storm pushed the game back uh, a day? Well, you know, again, we talk about overcoming any adversity that comes our way. And th th this week it came in the form of them moving the game back because of the storm. Of course, safety is always the number one concern for our football team, for our fans, for the administration, everyone involved. So I commend everyone who put their hands together and decided to move the game to Sunday to ensure our safety. And um, our guys, it gave us another day of preparation. And I, I thought it helped out today. And, you know, again, our guys put all the outside noise aside and found a way to come out and get a big win. Now we turn our attention to a party favorite, the best homecoming moments of 2019. A little side note, a footnote, if you will. We'll, we'll put it down at the bottom of the screen. For those of you keeping score at home, the best homecoming moments that we ourselves actually attended is the disclaimer. Because if we weren't there, we cannot co-sign on that thing at all. I cannot take your word about the potato salad and how banging it was. All right, so moving on. The big moments of homecoming. Six, five, four belong to Howard, North Carolina A&T, and Spellhouse. What can I say about homecoming in the mecca of black excellence? Well, the parade had King T'Challa and Killmonger together, swerving in charges. The food was incredible, authentic, and made with that good HBCU love. So how long you been out here at the homecomers cooking? Uh, yeah, what, 15 years? So what keeps you coming back? The people, man. You know. Uh, I will literally actually, through doing this, we, we've been able to establish a brick and mortar. It's called the Tender Rib. It's uh, across from Andrews Air Force Base. And basically, uh, we specialize in Southern cooking. So, uh, you know, 
we love Howard. We love the homecoming. We love the games. So, you know, from Uncle Clyde, man, it's much love. Now, Howard had the homecoming halftime all to themselves, and they started out with some pomp and circumstances with the coronation of the royal court. But then it was show enough showtime as Howard's band put their whole leg in this halftime performance. <laughs> Back on the yard at 1601 East Market Street for the greatest homecoming on earth. You already know, greatest homecoming in the world. Don't let anybody tell you different. And they might need to change the T in a and to tailgate because the grills were smoking and every Aggie I saw had a clean bone in hand. We gotta have fish every whole summer. Fried fish, fried fish every whole summer, brother. Aggie fried. And the family reunion vibes were extra heavy. I met all types of black excellence in the G Hotel. I came to NT in 1959. During my freshman year, we started to sit in demonstration at Woolworth. I have met some of the most outstanding leaders in the world right here at NT. As well as my own kinfolk, Sybil, the voice behind the cookout classic Don't Make Me Over, who was also Miss a t back in her day. Honey, I was on the stage in Corbett doing my thing. <laughs> And it was great. And what the beauty was, you know, line dancing was a big deal, like electric slide. They ended up electric sliding and don't make me over, but it was fab. A whole floor filled with nothing but Aggies and Aggie supporters just doing doing a dance together. So for me, it was really cool. So the minute that don't, 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 don't make me, don't, 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 don't make me, don't, don't. Once that hit, I was good. <laughs> It was Spellhouse in Atlanta, translation, homecoming for Spellman and Morehouse, and it was as thick as duck butter all around the stadium and in the stands. Alums back in town showing that they still have it and we're here for it. And so is Pop Pop. We picked this one up in the second half, Morehouse already looking good and feeling good, up 22-0 over Benedict. Now Benedict not having the year it expected, winless so far, but on the comeback trail, maybe. Third quarter, Raylan Elzey on the receiving end of this Eric Phoenix pass. Trust me, he caught it, just a bit of two ships passing in the night behind the lens. Later in the fourth quarter, Elijah Watson with a rumbling, bumbling, stumbling touchdown catch, 22 to 13 ball game. The Morehouse lead trimmed to nine. Keep it moving in the fourth quarter. Michael Sims with an insurance policy to Tremel Gooden. And do my eyes deceive me? Santo Dunn earning his scholarship. Not only is he a superstar rusher, he kicks extra points. Uh, this one missed, though, but Morehouse wins the game 34 to 13. Forty-six annual Bayou Classic, it goes down in New Orleans, Louisiana. You had the Southern University Jaguars coming in with a record of 7-4. Grambling State Tigers started the season 0-4, won six straight. Coming into the Bayou Classic, winner goes on to face Alcorn State in the SWAC championship game. Grambling starts off quickly, jumps out to a 21-3 lead. Southern comes chipping back. We go into the half. Grambling leading 21 to 17. Second half, all Southern in the third quarter. They go into the fourth quarter. They take the lead 28 to 24. Then Grambling comes back. It all comes back down to special teams at the end. 
the biggest, biggest impact on the game. Three block kicks uh, for Southern against Grambling, including the game winner. Southern holds on 30 to 28. The Jags are headed to Lorman, Mississippi next week to face off against Alcorn State in a rematch from the 2018 SWAT Championship game. Winner heads to Atlanta for the Celebration Bowl. We are down to our final big three moments of the year. Wally, number three would be two bands, one city, Winston-Salem State and Wake Forest coming together, uniting the city of Winston. I'm a Winston guy. It was great to see. Uh, first day of the year, the Friday before it started, just a big moment for the city and good to see the HBCU PWIs come together in love and harmony. Steven, our number two moment of the year was a game that we had looked forward to all summer long. SU, FAMU, that duking it down in Tallahassee, two teams that uh, felt like they probably should be here, but they didn't hit, get here, but they gave us a great game uh, down there in Tallahassee, down to the wire, and our guy Ryan Stanley pulled it out at the end. It could be our celebration ball next year. Who knows? We'll have to see. But our number one moment of the year was, without a doubt, the celebration bowl that was played on Saturday, December 21st, when they scored one. All the points. 50 million, 11 There's points. No more points to be <laughs> like no more like points I just said, that was a last scene of Scarface <laughs> shootout that we saw there, for yes, sure. it was. To someone on the outside looking in, Winston-Salem State and Wake Forest University may seem like polar opposites. One is a private, predominantly white university with more than 8,000 students. Founded in 1834 on a plantation by the Baptist State Convention of North Carolina. The other is a historically black public research university with an enrollment of just over 5,000 that was started in a one-room schoolhouse with only 25 students and one teacher. And with only five miles separating their campuses, they've been neighbors in Winston-Salem since 1956 sometimes serving as brick and mortar representations of the city's demographic divide. But through what may seem like an infinite amount of differences, the schools were able to find common ground in the sweet sound of music. As Wake Forest invited Winston-Salem State's marching band, the Red Sea of Sound, to share the field at halftime during the Demon Deacons home opener of the 2019 football season. Hello HBCU world, my name is Michael Magruder. I am the director of bands at Winston-Salem State University. We needed something that two groups would come together. Although it's a brief moment for us, but we're still here. They appreciate us being here. We appreciate them even asking us to be here. So we have a great relationship with the city of Winston-Salem. We have a great relationship with Wake Forest band directors. So we're trying to bridge the gap. This is going to be probably some of the biggest that a few of our bandsmen have performed for. So I think it means a lot to them just to be in front of this many people. You know, we went through a lot of hard work in band camp in the first two weeks of school, and now we get to show everybody on a large stage what the band can do. You gotta have two different personalities. You know, there's the military personality when you gotta get everybody together, make sure the lines are straight. Because then when I'm performing, you know, I wanna make sure that I look as good as possible. Um, I want to make sure that my moves are nice and crisp. And before the bands united for their halftime performance, they wowed the crowd from the stands as Winston-Salem State's band injected a little extra energy into the already raucous Wake Forest crowd. The bands played together for just over three minutes, but during that time, there was no us and there was no them. It was just we, as music was able to unite the two Winston-Salem universities in a moment of literal harmony. I've never seen a better halftime show. One of the best ever. I've ever seen. What y'all think of the halftime show? It was great. Two thumbs up, two great. thumbs up. They should have been doing it all along. Okay. It was lit. We've got to do it again. I'm thinking every single home game. Honestly, I like the vibe, the music choice, amazing. What's the recipe for the ultimate black college football experience? Take Florida A&M plus Southern University, bring the rivalry back after being dormant for almost a decade, add in two of the biggest, baddest bands in the land, put them in front of over 27,000 fans, and just sit back and watch history unfold. And the players on the field were ready, ready. Both squads were on one during pregame, and believe it or not, it exceeded the hype. So you can go ahead and file this one away in the classic section of the HBCU football history books. 
Ladarius Skelton was back in the third quarter, and he had the SU offense making all types of moves down the field. Skelton finds Jamar Washington, who puts the ill pivot on the defender, breaks free and dives into the end zone for the 23-yard score. Jags cut the Rattler lead down 19-14. The Southern section, rocking. The Jaguar D, flocking. Jacoby Papillion gets low for the interception, and the Jags got the stovetop hot and are cooking up a comeback in the third. Southern with a chance to take the lead, and Ladarius Skelton puts the squad on his back. Here he goes straight through the fangs of the Rattler D, reaches out for the goal line while being tackled. He gets the six, and the Jags take the 21-19 lead in the fourth quarter. But nothing seems to phase this guy, Ryan Stanley. Backed up against his own end zone, he finds Xavier Smith for 42 yards, then finds Smith again for 17 yards. It looks so good, they might as well run it back. Ryan Stanley, Xavier Smith, 17 yards. This one for the go-ahead touchdown with just over three minutes left to play, and the FAMU fans are all the way turned up. And the Rattlers win the thriller against Southern 27-21. the Rattlers get to sing their alma mater with their helmets held high after winning a classic iteration of a classic HBCU rivalry. Man, it's amazing, man. The crowd, man, it's just amazing, man. Fair you, Rattler Nation got the best fans, man. It feels good. Hey, you already know who and I got in the championship at 3 no right now. First quarter, Carter the Bell over the shoulder like Little Michael Jackson in the studio with Barry Gordon. He tops it off with the LeBron chalk toss. That's a whole lot of goat business. Only right a few teams there. at three feet. North Carolina A and T one on. Come on, man. My brother slides. My son slides. My whole team, yeah, we slide. John May Martin, 75 yards through the tunnel, 31 10. Celebration Bowl champs here. We go next year, the year after that, and the year after that. Let's go, baby. I'm just a blessed to be here. I don't care about all the, uh, the stuff. I'm a team player at the end of the day. As long as my team winning, that's all I care about at the end of the day. This one was a final scene of Scarface type shootout. That's six rings. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm about to run out. Why do I graduate now? So I ain't run out. Graduate, we graduate and win championships right here. Perfect way to end the season. I don't think it, you could outdo yourself any more than having a game that no one expected, not even the coaches or the players expected uh, for that many points to be put up. But the fans were delighted. Media members were delighted. I think everybody except for probably all Corn State fans uh, were delighted with the outcome of the Celebration Bowl. All right, more of the no huddle when we return because we got to switch gears while we, we got a little surprise coming up for our fans, and it has something to they do cooking. with – Basketball. It's on the way next, right here on the No Huddle. I've been in the gym getting my level up. Defenders getting gas, so I mash on the pedal. What? The backboard I crash, slam the rock to a pebble. What? The breeze from the past will assist your irregular breathing handle. Got your ankle in your knee in a disagreement. Now your balance taking off of bereavement. They want to know what I'll be cooking up, because then they think we be even. But I know, look, dish this, so I never seen it now. Jim getting my level up, fenders getting gas, so I mash on the pedal. What the backboard, I crash, slam the rock to a pebble. What my team is the strongest, and we crush the competitors. Uh. For the latest news on black college football and culture, go to HBCUGameDay.com.